This is a quick overview of all the spots we visited during the trip in our little car camper. Day one was simply driving. We ended up spending the evening in Beloit, Quebec. Day two was another day of driving. We made it to the Bay of Fundy in Mesa's Bay, New Brunswick. Day 3. We spent the day in the Bay of Fundy National Park, walking on the ocean floor at low tide. This was a first for us. The park's natural landscape is absolutely breathtaking. On day four, we started off our day with some history lessons at Fort Beausjour National Historic Site. We spent some time looking for fossils at Joggins Fossil Cliffs. We ended up spending the night near Advocate Harbor. We met a couple who gave us their campfire as they were just leaving. Our first campfire of the trip. Today we explored the shores of Nova Scotia. We visited the Fundy Discovery Site in Truro, Nova Scotia, where we saw a tidal bore, a single wave that comes up the bay twice a day. Burnt Coat Head Park is known for having the highest tides in the world, 50 feet. Here it is at low tide. The north shore of Nova Scotia is peaceful. We spent time just enjoying the beautiful landscape. We spent the night on an unused pier near Digby. Shelburne is a very quiet and cute town for a quick stop. We then stopped at to Jim Kajak Seaside Park and hike to the shore to see the seals. We did see them on the rocks in the distance, but my phone's camera wasn't good enough to capture them. Green Bay was our overnight spot. Day 8. We spent the day exploring the south shore of Nova Scotia. Lunenburg is known for being one of the most accurate surviving examples of a British colonial town. And Peggy's Cove is one of Canada's most famous lighthouses. We also had a tour of the Halifax Citadel National Historic Site. Today we decided it was time to head to Cape Breton Island. This is Lawrencetown Beach, where the water was too cold for swimming, but very beautiful anyway. After the beach, we headed to Cape Breton Island. We discovered Capaguet Lighthouse. It was the perfect place to settle down for the night. Day 10. We spent most of the day at the Fortress of Louisbourg National Historic Site. This was one of the best sites we have ever seen. Duncan was our overnight spot, right on the edge of the cliff. Today we took the ferry to Newfoundland. 
It cost $200 for the two of us and the car, and it took seven hours to cross the Gulf of St. Lawrence. When we reached Newfoundland, our mission was to find somewhere to settle in for the night. As you can see, we had a little visitor. Our first day in Newfoundland was so nice. We drove up the east coast and loved the natural beauty of the landscape. We discovered Bottle Cove with lots of hiking trails. It was so beautiful, we decided to stay here for the day and spend the night here as well. We collected some driftwood, made a fire, and enjoyed another beautiful sunset. We spent the day exploring Gros Moore National Park. We hiked, we visited Lobster Head Cove Lighthouse, and the Broom Point Fishing Premises, where we learned all about the lobster and cod fishermen. We settled in Port Saunders for the night. At the very northern end of Newfoundland, there is a Viking village. It was cold. We joined a guided tour and learned how the Vikings arrived here from Greenland and how they lived in this little village. After that, we drove towards Kings Point where we saw our very first iceberg. It was very cool. The next day, we saw our very first moose. In Gander, we stopped for a few errands and discovered the Aviation Museum. Alex enjoyed looking at all the planes. Then we headed to Twillingate Island toward Long Point Lighthouse. The hiking trails were pretty great around there. And this is where we ended up staying for the night. Day 16, one of my very favorite days, the Puffin viewing sites. They were adorable. Are they kissing? Dungeon Provincial Park was close by, a great place for yeah, overnight one. camping. On day 17, we visited Cape Spear Lighthouse. It's the easternmost point in Canada. It's a lovely place to explore. We started this day very early in the city of St. John's. It's a very colorful city and we loved exploring. After that, we decided it was time to head back to the mainland and start heading towards home. We stopped and explored Terra Nova National Park along the drive path. You could see for miles.
Woody Point was our overnight stop. Today was our final day in Newfoundland. We drove through Grossmore National Park one last time and stopped for a guided tour of the Tablelands. The landscape here is very unique due to glacial activity thousands of years ago. Then we headed back to Porto Basque, close to where we would take the ferry the next morning. Grand Bay Beach was a 10 minute drive from the ferry terminal. It was a lovely final night in Newfoundland. The next morning, we hopped on the ferry and took a seven hour ferry ride back to Cape Breton Island. We traveled north on the east side of Cape Breton Island. The Cabot Trail is stunning. We stopped at a clearing on the side of a cliff that used to be the foundation for a lighthouse. Day 22. The next day was mostly rainy. We didn't stop very much, but the drive was still quite lovely. Today we traveled up the east coast of New Brunswick and spent some time in Kujibinek National Park. I'm sure I said that wrong. After a sunny and warm beach day, we arrived at Misku Island Lighthouse, where we enjoyed another beautiful sunset. Day 24 started off with this beautiful sunrise at 5 a.m. We took our time traveling and exploring the seaside of the Gaspé Peninsula. More exploring on day 25. We stumbled upon this famous Quebec landmark called Percy Rock.
Forillon National Park is at the northern end of the peninsula. We hiked downhill to reach this beautiful little waterfall. More traveling along the seaside, exploring little towns and parks. We stopped at the second tallest lighthouse in Canada, Point Au Pair. There's also a submarine there to explore. Day 27 we spent exploring Quebec City. We explored the downtown area for a few hours. Then we traveled along the St. Lawrence Seaway and settled in a pretty little rest area for the night. On the second last day of our trip, we took a little detour to see our friends in Ottawa and then drove to Kingston. Before we left Kingston, we took a two-hour tour of the Kingston Penitentiary, a former maximum security prison. A very interesting tour. After that, we drove all the way home. And that was our month-long trip from Toronto to Newfoundland and back again. A total of 10,000 kilometers. We hope you enjoyed the tour.